Hi. Now in a previous tutorial what I showed you was a particular type of mechanical energy called gravitational potential energy. But now I want to introduce you to another form of mechanical energy called kinetic energy or KE for short. It's a form of energy that is associated with a particle moving and it's equal to a half mv squared where v is the velocity of the particle at any particular instant. Now suppose we had a particle and it was originally moving say towards the right with an initial velocity of u meters per second and there's a force acting on it a force acting on it which is to the right say a resultant force of f newtons then the particle accelerates and it reaches a final velocity of v meters per second and what i want to do is just a little bit of theory first and then we'll have a look at a typical question now we know that the resultant force here, F newtons, is equal to mass times acceleration. And also we should know that if that acceleration is constant that the final velocity V squared equals the initial velocity U squared plus 2 times A times S where S is the displacement. Now if we were to rearrange this equation to make A the subject by taking u squared from both sides and dividing by 2s, we would therefore end up with A equals v squared minus u squared all divided by 2s. Now if we call this equation up here f equals ma say equation 1 and we substitute our value for A into 1 Let's just write up here, substitute into 1. What we end up with is that the force F equals the mass times the acceleration, which we now know is V squared minus U squared, all divided by 2S. Now do you remember that work done by a force, in this case say F, okay is going to equal that force multiplied by the distance it moves its point of application in the direction of the force and that force f newtons moves a distance s so it'd be f times s now we know what f is from up here so that's going to be mv squared minus u squared all over 2s multiplied by this s. Now the s's cancel. So what we end up with is equal to a half mv squared if we divide each term here by the 2 we end up with the half mv squared minus a half mu squared. And this quantity here is the final kinetic energy of the particle. And minus a half mu squared is the initial kinetic energy of the particle. So we end up with a result that you need to remember that the work done by a resultant force F on a particle is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. All right. So what we have then is this result. Work done equals the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. In other words, the change in kinetic energy. Now I've got a problem here that uh, is going to be fairly typical of the kind of thing that you could get with something like this. What we've got is a car of mass 800 kilograms stops at a set of traffic lights and when the lights change the car accelerates and reaches a speed of 
14 meters per second after traveling a distance of 300 meters. Now if there's a resistance to motion of 420 newtons, we'll just put that in here, we've got to calculate the driving force assumed to be constant. So the driving force I'll mark in like this with a D, D for driving force, D newtons. Now there's also going to be the weight of the car acting downwards, that's going to be mg or in this case 800g newtons and there'll be a normal contact force upwards of r newtons. Now in order to calculate the driving force assumed to be constant what I'm going to need to do is look at the work done by the resultant force as we go from rest up to the 14 meters per second. So that resultant force okay, is going to be clearly to the right. And these two forces, the weight and the normal contact force, are not going to have any effect in the horizontal direction. So let's have a look then at the work done by the resultant force. Let's just put a little intro here work done by the resultant force. That's in getting its velocity to change from 0 to 14 meters per second. So that's going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. Half mv squared then minus a half mu squared. And what's that going to be for this particular example? Well it's going to be a half times the mass which is going to be 800 times the final velocity squared that would be 14 squared. And then you've got minus a half times the mass again 800 times its initial velocity squared 0 squared. And if you work that out you'll end up with 784 Hundred seventy-eight thousand four hundred, and the units are joules. Energy is in joules when you've got a velocity in meters per second, okay, and a mass in kilograms. Now that we've got the work done by the resultant force, we know that work done is the resultant force times the distance that that resultant force moves its point of application. So in other words we've got the resultant force is going to be d minus the resistance of 420 newtons and that acts over a distance of 300 meters so if we multiply that by 300 it is equivalent to the work done then by the resultant force of 78,400 joules. So all we've got to do is rearrange this for d. So we could divide both sides by 300 that will give us d minus 420 and then add on the 420. So d would equal 78400 divided by the 300 and then add on the 420. And if you do that you'll find that you get 681 Point three recurring. Just put a dot over the top there. And if we were to round that, say, to three significant figures, it'd be 681 newtons. And that's the three significant figures then. Okay. Well, I hope that's given you some idea then of kinetic energy and how we can use it in a problem like this one. Now in my next video what I want to do is bring together gravitational potential energy with the kinetic energy and I'll show you how they are linked as we look at a particle moving along horizontal planes, vertical planes and inclined planes. Well for the time being anyway that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial.